There we go. Now we've got a delegation to SOC Analyst Tier 1 to get the case details. Hi, I'm Dan Dai from Google Cloud Security. On Thursday or Friday last week, Claude Code announced the availability of sub-agents. So I spent Saturday and a bit of today, Sunday, uh, hooking those up to my AI runbooks GitHub repo, trying out the personas that were defined there. And I found it was quite easy. Uh, the personas just needed to be symlinked into the Claude agents subdirectory and a little bit of updates to the YAML front matter for the Markdown documents and the existing personas worked out of the box. So I'm going to show uh, using those agents stepping through an incident response plan. All right, I have just configured some Claude agents and want to put them through their paces. So let me first list the agents that are available. I have a CTI researcher, detection engineer, threat hunter, SOC analysts, one through three. And of course, I've also got on this the MCP servers for Google SecOps, SIM and SOAR, Security Command Center, and Google Threat Intelligence. And I just grab, I'm going to grab the first case on my SIM, my SOAR. Actually, I am going to switch models. Opus. All right, new prompt is use the available subagents to investigate case 3623. There we go. Now we've got a delegation to SOC analyst tier one to get the case details. Nice. And there's the first tool call to the SecOps or MT MCP server. The tool is get case full details. All right, there we've got a second agent entering. And I like how they are color coded differently. So the SOC tier one is red and the SOC analyst tier two is green. And the tier two analyst is analyzing event alerts. Now, a funny thing here is it is using the SOAR integration for Chronicle to do this research. And I saw this earlier. It is because I failed to um, authenticate with the SecOps uh, SOAR server. My application default credentials have expired, uh, but the SOAR API is using an API key that does not expire. So it is working around that limitation to do the research that is needed using the tools that it has, which is pretty amazing. All right, we have written an alert analysis report. Unfortunately, it is swallowed. I didn't catch that in time. Oh, but interesting, we have brought a third agent onto the, the job. The Threat Hunter is now using the SecOps MCP, and again, it's searching security events, running a UDM query via the SOAR to circumvent that authentication problem. And here we have a fourth agent, the CTI researcher. So while that's running, I can speak to how these agents are configured a little bit. This is the AI Runbooks uh, GitHub repo. And it had already in the rules bank, which is common to all of the different agents. I have this configured for Claude, Klein, and Gemini. And I'm just using symlinks uh, to put this directory into context for each of those dot directories. And the rules bank had personas already. It didn't take a lot to convert these to a Claude format. Claude, I already had YAML front matter and just needed to add a couple of new attributes to the YAML front matter. Claude code agents expect name, title, and description. Um, and tools is optional. If you don't provide it, it gets access to all of the tools. There is definitely an opportunity with these agents to give them a subset of the tools, which would improve performance. They'd be more focused and less distracted by context around tools that 
aren't important to them. Uh, but that requires a little bit of figuring out. Um, so for now, they all agents have access to all tools, but they are driven, uh, describe the um, MCP servers and in the markdown portion of uh, each persona is a description of which tools might be most relevant for them, the kind of work that they do. Um, in the middle of adding some slash commands uh, for um, invoking these kind, this kind of research from this agent as well. So those are the personas, personas, and those are linked into Claude through a sim link into this agent's directory. So it's the same files. All right, well, we've got these four agents on the job being coordinated by the SOC manager. I am gonna pause the video here and come back and we will look at the finished report once that's complete. All right, I gave that a little bit of time and the report that was written, is this right here is incident response plan. Let's look at that in preview. Give it a little bit more real estate. So you can see the markdown and the front matter for the markdown over here on the left. And here is the rendered report. We've got the host timeline context. Nice that we have identified the APT, name of the back door. Here is some attribution. And then on to the containment and the actions that are recommended. Now we don't have an EDR connected to this particular, the agents don't have access to EDR tools. So it's recommending follow on action. And I like this, I like this checklist. This is nice. I haven't seen that rendered in Markdown like this before. And here's some uh, threat intelligence correlation that we got from GTI, Google Threat Intelligence. So yeah, this is a this is a nice report. And ah, post incident, I I'm very fond of these uh, lessons learned, improvements, and sometimes uh, changes that we can make to improve the uh, the run books. These are really nice to ensure that we're able to reproduce the findings. So yeah, that, that is a very nice report. And you can see we used a variety of agents for this. We used the incident responder, the CTI researcher, and the threat hunter. So that's, that's what I was looking for. I'm trying to ensure that these new Claude agents are able to use uh, the personas from the AI run box. So I'm gonna call that a success and I will see you next time. <laughs>